After several months of using ArchBase Linux, I got bored again and ready to pick up another distribution. And then I remembered that someone recommended Solas in the comments underneath one of my videos. I was like, why not give it a try? It is another rolling release distribution and it hasn't adopted WLAN yet. So I wanted to see how well it works on my NVIDIA equipped laptop. Let's talk about the good. Solas is following a more conservative release pattern than ArchBase Linux called curated rolling release. The difference is that in Arch Linux, you can update the packages to a version that is so new that it might break your system, which is what we call the bleeding edge. While in Solas, all the packages you can install have gone through a short period of testing, and the updates are scheduled every Friday, which is to make sure that the system is not as shaky as Arch, which is what they call as the cutting edge, which is good for those who don't mind staying a little behind but still don't want to use older packages. Let's talk about the software availability. I'm a Brave browser fan and I use it daily, but the issue is that it is not available in most of the distribution's official repository. In Arch, I need to use AUR package. Ubuntu requires separate PPA and additional repository is also required for Fedora and SUSE, but I was shocked when it comes out in the EO package search result. I know that this single case does not mean that Solas has more applications than other distributions, but because Brave is one of my most frequently used applications, so I'm grateful for the Solas team to make it super easy to install. Another characteristic of this distribution is the third party section in the software center. This is where you can find some applications that are not included in the official repository. Solus team did a fantastic job for its user to make sure that they don't have type in anything in the terminal in order to install things. And Slack is one of the applications you can find here to install. I know this is not a large collection of applications here, especially for someone like me who just came from Arch Linux. But without knowing the exact step Solus follow in order to include third-party applications, I guess these might be the reasons behind it. At first, Solus does not have a large team, so they don't have the manpower to maintain a large collection of applications themselves. And second, they might need to create a universal interface for application developers to publish and maintain their own software. And as a developer myself, I know how hard it can be when leading these kind of cross-team efforts because people like to blame others when something broke. So I can't imagine how hard it is for the Solus team to maintain this handful of applications. Finally, let's praise Budgie. I remember the first time using it, everything is so easy to find that the learning curve for me is relatively flat compared to other desktop environment. I think now it is my favorite desktop environment of all. I'm a shallow person. I like pretty things. I know I can change the themes and icons in XFCE and Mate. I just prefer not to if I have the choice because I'm also a lazy person. I like GNOME, but I still have to use the Twigs and extensions applications in order to make things work for me. In Solus, I can just use the pre-installed budgie desktop settings. It doesn't have a lot of functionalities, but they are more than enough for my daily use. I like KDE for having everything in places, but when comparing the default look and feel, Budgie is just cleaner to look at for me. I also want to add here that Solus is a very interesting distribution to me. It is built from scratch, using a unique package manager and a homegrown desktop environment. And after reading its Wikipedia page, I'm intrigued by how they look at things. For example, according to the creator who has already left the project, that EO package was never meant to be a package manager. He believed that users should never need to worry about interacting with the package manager. And the end goal here is to get rid of it. And I can see the software center and the third party implementation reflecting his view. This is one of the reasons I love about Linux. Each distribution and software engineer has their own philosophy and beliefs when it comes to how things should work. Not only do they have the know-how, they also have the passion and determination to finish it. I admire people of actions. 
because instead of sitting there criticizing and complaining about others, they stood up and made something that they are really passionate about. They know that what they created might not be appreciated by a lot of people, but they still did it. So thank you. Linux community cannot thrive without you guys. Now let's look at something I personally find difficult. In my opinion, their software distribution system is a blast and a curse at the same time. Yes, it seems to have more applications in their official repository than other distributions. It does support some third-party applications. And Snap Package is working out of the box. And if you want, you can set up Flatpak fairly easy. But there are still some shortcomings. Let's start with the applications like Sublime Text. You can install it from Snap Store, Third Party, and Flatpak. The issue here is that Sublime Text 4 has been released for a long time, but it is still version 3 on Flathub and Third Party Store. It seems that Snap Store has already caught up with the version number, but it was still an older version when I installed it three weeks ago. It kept asking me to update to a newer version every time I use it, and there's no easy way of installing it natively according to its official website. So the issue here is that for application like this, if I don't plan to build it from source, I have to settle for a slightly older version compared to the version I can use on system like Linux Mint, which is ironic that I have to use an older version on a rolling release than I can on a pointed release distribution. Which brings me to the second point, that if the package you want to use is in none of these places, you have to compile it from source code. The example I have is that I need to use the systemd resolve update script for OpenVPN in order to connect to my company's infrastructure. It is available to install in Ubuntu's official repository after version 2004. It is also available on AUR for Arch Linux, but here I had to follow its wiki on GitHub and built it from scratch. It was not that hard for me to make it work, but I think it is another irony I find that Solus team has made so much effort for its user not to worry about interacting with package manager using command line, but some of us still have to build those packages from scratch, which is definitely not for everyone. Until now, I could still figure out most of the issues in Solus. So let me tell you what broke the camel's back in the end. I've tried this twice and failed twice, and I have to use my laptop for work the very next day. So I couldn't find more time to finally solve it. I bet there's a better solution for this. And if you don't have a laptop with my configuration, you might never encounter this. So please let me know in the comment down below where you'll find me doing wrong. I mentioned in my other videos that I'm currently using a gaming laptop with both AMD and Nvidia GPUs. So after the installation, I didn't find any difficulties to find where to look at to install the NVIDIA proprietary driver. In fact, it was super easy and intuitive to install. The issue came after that. NVIDIA won't start after the reboot. This is where I started to poke around in the system. I've been using this website, which is dedicated for Linux users on ASUS gaming laptop. I found that the GPU switcher has been separated to a package called Super GFX CTL and was able to find the package on GitLab. So I started to follow the instruction. The only difficulty I found is that Solus is not using Grub as his boot manager. So for this part of the readme, I had to use Solus official website and some comments from community to make it work. And after everything's done, I was happy that I was able to find the solutions and did the tricks in my system. So I used the command to switch the GPU. I tried switching to NVIDIA and logged off. Nothing changed. And I see there's an error in the log saying that this folder does not exist. So I created it manually and tried again. This time, the display manager won't work after logging off. So I logged in to the TTY2 and checked this folder. I found that the program was able to find the location this time and created a new config file. So I opened it and tinkered with the content inside changing the value of the NVIDIA DRM to zero according to the readme, but it still won't work. I thought maybe it was because the system was not clean enough when I started the NVIDIA tinkering. So I reinstalled the whole system and tried again. 
the same exact thing happened to me. So if you're using an ASUS gaming laptop, which has the NVIDIA and AMD GPUs, you might run into the same issue. I think Solus is a very solid distribution. It is easy to install. The interface has a super clean and modern look, and you'll be able to find most of the things you need in their software center. The downside is that you might need to compile some of the package to suit your own need. And if you have a gaming laptop with both AMD and Nvidia GPUs, it can be a bit tricky to use. But overall, I love it. I had a ton of fun using it for the past weeks. Although, due to the time restriction and my personal competence, I couldn't figure out the GPU switcher. But I would definitely use it for a longer time if I could. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.